Hey everybody, welcome to the Steel Flyers podcast and video cast. We got a very, very special treat for you. We got the Professor Joe and, oh my, wait for it, the Phenom! Boom! He's sitting over here, baby, that's right. We got him on the Steel Flyers show. How you doing, buddy? Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun one today. Yeah, man. Professor Hopefully. Joe, how you doing, brother? Uh, I'll tell you at about 11 o'clock tonight. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you <laughs> yeah. on that for sure. Um, for sure. Uh, what, a, what a great treat it is to have both you guys on today. Um, we're going to get in right into it. Uh, we got a do or die situation here tonight. Um, the Flyers are on the line. OK, uh, if we don't win tonight, we're going home. We leave the bubble. And quite frankly, I don't think we're ready to leave the bubble. I really don't. I think we've played enough hockey that we should still be playing hockey. So, Joe, ask us the question. Uh, I saw this on the radio earlier and I thought it would be a good question. Do we think the Flyers just the better way to answer is, do we think the Flyers just overperformed this season? So, therefore, they're not choking in the playoffs? They're just not the team we thought they were? Or do we think because of how they performed this season, they are now choking in the playoffs? Wow. There you go. What do you think, Chris? Give us your take on that, buddy. I, we'll, we'll start off with you. How's that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, personally, I think, to me, like what I see in their game is – from where they left off at the regular season, winning nine out of their last 10, and then you go in the, the four-month, however long it was, break, and then you start off from the exhibition game through the round robin, and the first, I'd say maybe probably just the first game versus Montreal, their play was, like, fantastic. And they were really good. They could score goals. I mean, they were dominating teams that, were, that they were looked at to lose, and they clinched a one seed. Uh, well, I guess I should say a quote unquote one seed. Um, but then it's like from game two and on their play, each game has just progressively gone down consistently at times, not in full, but at certain times when they need it, they can't, you know, they, they just can't keep it together. And it's like, it's it, the pucks in the back of their net. So to me, it's like, Honestly, I'm not I don't want to blame this on the bubble. I know it probably sounds like that, but and I'm not trying to do that, but I think if they were in the position that they were going in in the last month of that season and if they didn't have the bubble, that question probably wouldn't be asked because if they're losing a playoff round and oh, things wow. like that and if they're looked at as the one seed. So to me it's like I don't think they're actually that bad of what like to me they're just not playing the way that they could be. Like, they could be playing so much better right now to where this series could literally be 3-1 or the Flyers could have won in a sweep with the way that these games have gone at times. So, to me, it's like, it's just the little things like, you know, like turnovers are huge, obviously, and things like that. And it's like little things in a game that just really hurt them at times. And and, and the Islanders are a very good team in playing with the lead. And, and, if they, and if they're able to get the lead, then it's hard to come back. So, again, I mean, to me... I think it's just more of the Flyers aren't showing what they can, and I think they really showed that in the last game. I thought that was actually their best game of the whole series so far, but they just yeah, you're couldn't not score. the only one saying that. Yeah, yeah, you're not the only one saying that, Joe. What do you think, man? What give, give us your first take on that, man? Um, well, for me, I feel like when you're perform when you're a team that should be like kind of how you said, Chris, like you should be up through, like you could be up through, but that's kind of my definition of choking. Like, if you're a team that should be up by that and you're not, well, welcome in the New York Mets. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of my definition of choking. Uh, yeah. I also think AV's choked, and I mean that foolheartedly. Uh, I love AV, and I think he's a great coach, but he's been foolheartedly outcoached by Barry Trotz. It's not even close. He's been destroyed by Barry Trotz. Yeah, uh, and I think, and, and, and one thing I'll go off of that too is the fact that there's only so much he can do when guys aren't producing. Like, and like it's one thing to stand behind him. He's not the one on the ice. So those are the guys that have to, you know, like these guys have to put the puck in the net. And it's not, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and that's the easiest thing. Like, you know, well, the team isn't producing. Oh, well, let's fire the coach because that's the easiest thing you can do. Oh no, I don't think they're going to fire the coach. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm just saying in general in-game adjustments. Like in right, the regular right. season, he made in-game adjustments. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, he just stays pat when stuff doesn't work. Like Drew Couturier and Voracek is abysmal. Stop putting them on the same line. They're abysmal. Like it doesn't well, work. They suck. They're a terrible pairing together. They're awful, and they haven't done anything. I, I mean, so, I, I wouldn't agree with that, but go ahead. No, they haven't. What have they done this postseason? Name one thing other than Voracek, and he hasn't scored this entire series. He has they, points. They, they had a goal last game, and no, they, they generated for majority of their chances. Who had a goal they, last? Couturier. Coots had the goal. Oh, did he have a goal? Okay, well, yeah, good yeah, for, yeah. He's the only guy that's doing decent on that line anyway, because Voracek did good in the first series and forgot what hockey was in this series. So... I mean, you got to space these guys out. You can't keep your top guys, especially when they stink, on the same line. Giroux hasn't done anything. Uh, and uh, Jake's done a lot until this series. And then he just hasn't done anything. And then Cooch has been the better guy in this series, where G has just been abysmal the entire postseason. G hasn't, G's had like one good game and it was on Calvin's birthday. So the, I mean, he hasn't done a damn thing. So okay. they're, they need to figure something out. They also need to adjust this whole lineup. If they come in with the same lineup tonight, they're going to lose. They 100% are going to lose this game well, if they come in with the same lineup tonight. You know what, Steel? I'll, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead, because I know you want to say something. Yeah. I'm going to say I heard a, I've heard a lot of different views about what's going to happen tonight. And I've heard it from a lot of different people. And I saw some stuff on Twitter, and I read some articles and whatever. And you guys have had your your takes and your thoughts and whatever, whatever. And I'm going to say this. <clears throat> have we seen any pushback from this team? No. No, at, at times. And it was really uh, only times. last game. Yeah, okay. at times. At times. It's, okay, yeah. so mark that down. That's question number one. Yeah. Question number two. Okay. Why are we continually – going with the same lineup every single night. Now, Chris, I understand with what you said because he may not have, and, and, and I'm going to touch on that in a minute, that he may not have the guys producing. So what can you do, okay? What, what do you do when you don't have guys producing? And then that goes to what exactly with what Joe was saying. Hey, these guys stink. Why, yeah. why do they keep putting them in? What? Yeah. We don't right. have much of other choices because you can't put some of the kids in because they haven't played since exactly. since before we got into the bubble. And, and that's the thing. Like well, everybody wants to talk about putting, put you know, in. Frost in or, or guys like Freeman. Like these guys haven't played in, in how long. That's his fault, though. You could have put him in more in the round robin. You could have put him in more in the exhibition. That's his own fault. He created that own problem. Well, now, here's my biggest point right here, okay? Based off of everything that you guys said and based off of the two points that I just made, I think we're going to lose. And no, I'll tell you why I think we're going to lose. I'll tell you why I think we're going to lose. knowing the Flyers, they would win two games and lose in seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just okay. Just then knowing the Flyers, yeah. they, would lo- they would win game five and six and lose in seven. <laughs> well, that would yeah, be worse. I feel like just, I would yeah, exactly. That would, that That's be exactly worse. what's going to happen, yeah. Here's, here's, what I, here's why I say this, because I haven't – I heard this on a podcast, uh, on a podcast that the OMB Puck guys did, and they had Amy on uh, from their – from the – and I'll tell you what. She made an awesome point. There has been no pushback from this team since day one, since we got into this bubble, okay? And I'm a firm believer, and if I don't see it, then how can you tell me you're going to do it? Yeah. So you can sit there and tell me you're going to change the lineup and you can sit there and tell me you're going to do this and this goalie's going to start and this person's going to start and blah this and blah that and blah this. But you know what? You haven't shown me spit. Exactly. You haven't shown me yeah. any want to. You haven't shown me any want to do it. You haven't shown me any drive. Nothing. You Look, the first three games that we played, those round robin games, they look like all-star games. We were gliding around. There was no intensity. There was no hitting. There, yeah. there was nothing. Guys were just skating You're around. Like Tampa, actually. Yeah, exactly. And now, look, I get it. Boston wasn't all the way back. Tampa wasn't all the way back. And Washington yeah. just, just played like dirt. I get it. Okay. But we, we got through that very luckily. 
yeah. because we didn't yeah. play our best hockey. And mm-hmm. then we didn't win against Montreal. We got lucky. Yeah. We yeah. just won that extra game that they mm-hmm. didn't. Yeah. They yeah. Well, clearly outplayed us every step of the way. Well, my one thing, and I've been no positivity on this podcast so far. Uh, I know, I know. Was um, <laughs> Jared Bednor basically said, screw it yesterday. And just put in all his young guys. You put in O'Connor, who played a good game. He's not even drafted. Yeah, uh, I think put, O'Connor's played a couple games. Yeah, he played a couple games. It might have been his third in, game, I he think. He just put him in this series, though, is yeah. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. He just put in Timmons this series. Yeah, I think they got so, like six injuries like, right exactly. now. Exactly. But yeah, even though you can treat a player that's playing abysmal almost like an injury, because it's mm-hmm. like he's not on the ice. It's yeah. pretty much the same thing. If you're playing yeah. abysmal, it's like you're not there. Yeah. So Justin Braun is slow as, slower than me on skates and is playing abysmal. Yeah. So therefore, he should not be in the line. To be honest, to they, be honest with you, I think Pro Niskanen has been just as bad as you know, oh yeah, but I think that's Mr. Hag. Like Pro Niskanen has not been good at all, and and I, I flat out said it in my video the other night. Like these guys have been terrible, and their play from the regular season to now is like here and here. It's not good. And still, one thing I wanted to bring up too is that when you when you say that about you know that they have to show it, it reminds me of the the speech that Aline Vigneault gave at training camp at the behind the glass when he said, you know, like that you can say you want to win and everything, but you have to show it. That to me is stuck with this team the whole season. And, and it's been there and it's been there at times. Like, you know, yeah. In the amount of times we can say that they're Stanley cup, you know, that they're contenders and everything. We've seen it. They're, yeah. They're We've not seen showing. it. We've yeah. seen it and you can do it again. And that's the thing that last game, I think this is starting to trend in the right direction. I think, and I love what Matt Niskanen said after last game too, is that, they're right there, and I know they're right there. I mean, you guys know it too. That was the first time they outshot a team in nine games. Like they were right there to, you know, to to get something. And Grice was phenomenal. And to me, the thing is, it's it's just that last game reminded me just like game one, where it's like, you know, you were down one nothing. In this game, you go into the third the third tied, and it's two crucial breakdowns in both games, and the game looks far more separated than what it actually was at a, at a point. It's the breakaway goal point. by Peugeot yeah. and, and the uh, the two-on-one goal from Nelson. Yeah, it's yeah. two pinches by Niskanen, and it's the same pairing, and it's just, I don't know. I, now, I think that, I agree with you on that, but I think that's Niski, because we, 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 what we credited Provy for, now obviously Provorov's a stud, but what we credited right. the fact that he bounced back from last year was how good a veteran like great veteran players stepped in and played on his line. Yeah, right. The fact that Niskanen has been abysmal and then it's kind of translated because I think in the Montreal series, Provy was okay. And yeah. now it's kind of caught up to him because Niski's been so bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I told this to Steele on the phone earlier. I would start switching the defensive lines. I think with how good Myers has played, he should be with mm-hmm. Provy. You yeah. should put Sanheim with Hag because you need more physicality. So give Hag more minutes. I would like to see Friedman too. I'd like to see either Sanheim with with Hag, like you said, or Sanheim with Friedman. That could work. Yeah, Sanheim with because that would be a lefty righty. If we could right. Friedman. Yeah, because when when we were talking earlier, Joe, we were talking about it, and and we would have two lefties on the second pair. Yeah. But if you put Friedman in there, that gives us a lefty and oh, a righty. My friend called Friedman a poor yeah. man's uh, Niskanen. I called him. Yeah. A man's brawn before because of how he does uh, he does like big stupid mistakes, yeah, but now yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid right. so what if so you think you think if we don't adjust the lineup at all, if we go with what we went with in the last game, you think we're we're gonna lose. Well, we're obviously only... not gonna go with what we went with the last game because Carter Hart's gonna be in. Well obviously, <laughs> yeah. but besides that, yeah. yeah. Right. To me, I think the only change that they really have to make is this I think you have to keep Giroux with Coots and Voracek. You have to. For how good they played last game, they got the goal. You got to keep that together. They were all over the ice. I personally think JVR should be slotted up with TK and Hayes. I do agree with that. He should be on the and second You should line put Farabee the down there with Grant and Albie Kubel because that line played in the round robin versus the Capitals. Not many people remember this because the second line yeah, was so yeah, dominant yeah. that game. But that yeah. line had a lot of chances. That third line with Farabee, Albie Kubel, and Grant in the middle yeah. was I really like good. I you, like that. You could keep Lawton still on the fourth line center, or if you put him at wing, maybe. And another thing is too is Raffle could be back tonight. You you don't you don't know. So that maybe would I would like to see Raffle in because I think he's been really good. I think I think he has 
I think I read a tweet today from Sam Carcitti. He's got like three goals in, in the seven games he's played. Four. 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 Okay. Yeah. Four. So, so again, yeah, I mean, he's been really good as well. So I think that's the thing you might have to do. I think, but then another thing is, is like, do you really think they want to switch up that third line in the last two games? Cause they've been playing good with Pitlick and JVR and Lawton. They've been really good. They yeah. generate the goal one game. So and, now, uh, so now if we put your second line in, and the, and we leave the JVR line in. Yeah. See, look, I am a firm believer in this. I would like to see G at center. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I think if you put G at center, that allows you the speed up the middle. Yeah, and then that allows you to put Coots at center. Even though I I I get it, we're breaking up the line. I get it. But I, because we need that speed up the middle, yeah. that's why I think we, we should also move need more through. defense. That's our issue with keeping well, those guys know, at the same hey. line. It's not just off. <laughs> G's been playing his best defense when he's not been playing his best yeah. off. Right. I, so, I think the only time they have problems in the defensive zone is when it takes them one, two, three times to get it out. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the, you the, the, that line. That's my point. If you oh, spaced yeah. out three A, you would have yeah. another guy to help. Right. If that yeah, that's the thing. made a rookie mistake. To me, I think the defense is is too like I I, I can't even think. I, I think they're just slow. Like it just seems like every time they get the puck, they they wait until the last spot. Like I have never seen a team in this league get stuck in their own zone and purposely reverse the puck back along the boards, even though it's Behind already taken you three yeah. four times yeah. to get it out. Well, You're still well, going to okay. reverse it around. It it just makes no sense. I'm also going to uh, quote the infamous Lance Green and say, why would you willingly give up possession of the puck by dumping it in? Oh, God. I... <laughs> there was a play the other night from Farabee where he literally got the blue line and had all the time in the world and dumped it. Yeah. Dumped it. With an, but... with an Islanders team that's literally the whole time just two, three passes up the ice and, yeah. and, it's, and it's a breakout the other way. And, exactly. and, the, and the thing is, is like, to me, in the defensive zone, they look tired every time. Yeah, every single I time agree. they look tired. No, like, I agree. Especially that second line with Hayes and Konechny. Like, they just look like – and then that's what generates the power play for the Islanders in the first period too. Exactly, because as soon as they dump the puck in, we are not fast enough to win the, the race to the puck. And because we don't – because we're not fast enough to win that race, then they get to the puck, and before you know it, they're down on our end with a shot on goal. You know, right. We also and, and, like and AJ. Yeah. Yeah. Get pucks deep. At least if you have JJ to say get pucks deep, it makes the world okay. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. That, 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 that phrase just sounds amazing. Coming out of JJ's <laughs> mouth, so. Oh, man. I... All right. Well, we've talked about the bad. Let's talk about the good. Let's talk about some good. All yeah. right. Let's talk about some good. Um, if the lineup stays the same, okay. Do you guys really think we can win this game? I mean, I the lineup is actually going to change because we obviously know it's going to be Carter Hart, obviously. Right. Okay, okay, so that's going to be the difference maker right there. Because I think – I can't remember if it was Joe or somebody else who I was talking to earlier today or maybe one of you guys. I can't remember. But somebody said that if Carter Hart would have played in the game instead of Elliott, then maybe the game wouldn't have been what it was because Hart would have probably made that save on that – on that breakaway. Well, the, the, the breakaway should have never happened. Yeah, right. But, but I think he would have made that save. I agree with you. I don't think Elliot, I mean, Elliot, Elliot, that, I, that, mean, I don't, Moose just, I don't agree in that with game them. though. They like, did, Moose, but I don't like, think he also, but the honestly, thing, go ahead, Joe. I yeah. disagree with the post game. That was a soft goal. And I think Moose would say that was a soft goal, even yeah, on a that's break. Definitely one he'd want back. Five hole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah one thing sure. I will say though, is that I think in game three and, uh, I can't remember who I heard this. Oh, it was actually on the Stick to Hockey podcast with Jason Martinez and Russ Cohen. Yeah. And they were talking about, and this was their last episode, I think, was on Friday. So this was before, this was after the overtime game and the, the delay of the, the two days and things like that. Oh, uh, okay, um, okay. They talked about how they might go with Elliot to change it up with for the Islanders. So, they, so maybe because I thought in game three, I thought the Islanders had a lot of chances in front of the net and they were able to get to the front of the net twice generated two goals from there. And they were able to get in on Carter Hart and generate chances. So maybe that was the reason why they put Elliot. I think it was two things. I think it was because of that. And plus it's a back-to-back as well. 
And honestly, I think they're confident in Elliott, and I don't yeah. see really any reason why they wouldn't be. I don't see the reason you shouldn't be confident in Moose. It's just he can't steal you a game most of the time at this point of his career. The only goalie you have on your roster that can most likely steal you a game, and that's still a question mark because of his age in the playoffs, but he already has, yeah. is, I, I, hard, I, is hard. And to go if, off that, I think, it's, I think it was more that Moose did that really all season. I mean, he stole them games, he won them games, he kept them in games. Like, that was his mojo for the year. But that year. was his job. Right, yeah. that's Hello, his job. that's your but job. Play- exactly. In the playoffs, you don't think – like, like wh- I think A.V.'s outsmarted himself. Uh, I think most of this playoffs, he's outsmarted himself. He's like, well, if I do this, blah, 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 and yeah. it doesn't work. Um, where you need to just think with your gut because that's what's worked for him the entire year. Now, all of a sudden, he's thinking with – his heart and outsmarting himself and doing all this other nonsense that ain't working. Um, where you need to, That's a if, great point. if it's a back to back, I don't care. It's the playoffs. He's 21 years old. It's yeah. a back. There's no but, travel. But, like there's no, there's no travel and he's young. I mean, th- like the, all these goalies that are in their mid thirties played back to backs. Yeah, exactly. So if right. you can't, if you're scared of him playing a back to back, then you have an issue there with your mentality with your goaltender. Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't really think it was the back-to-back. I think it was more let's change this up because they've been able to score on him, and he also gave up a couple goals he definitely would want back in that game. So that might have been something, too. And again, it's not like, yeah, they lost the game, but it's not like the game was Elliott's fault. I mean, Elliott was really good in that game. Yeah, no, not, not blaming Elliott at all. But let me say this. Almost every goal that's been scored on Carter Hart, where's it been from? Right smack right in, front in front of the front net, of the slot, yeah, the slot. point blank range. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, what is wrong? Why? Why are we getting these point blank range shots? Why can't we get those? What? Look, we have proven that we can beat Price by getting him moving left to right, and, and that's the. And that's exactly how you have to beat Barlamov and, too. And Grice as well. And Grice, what? And yeah. We're we're yeah. taking these. We're doing. We're playing like hackstall ish. Yeah, we're we're, we're mean, doing these I think outside the one thing they did right range they, shots and yeah, what? I think the one thing they did though was they they went they they went you know low to high and that generated chances. And another thing is the Islanders don't give up much. I mean everything. I mean that when they played versus the Caps, everything's at the outside. And I think the reason why the Caps struggled was because they tried to make too many passes that just weren't there. Yeah, you got the exactly. skill, but if you can't, if you got two three guys on you, you know you can't really do much. So. Exactly. Again, it's just, you know, I thought the Flyers did a good job of that. And the one thing is, too, is like, I feel like they didn't get really any rebound chances at all. And then they started to like they really were shooting from the point. And that's what generates their chances. You get bodies in front, you get the tip goal. Uh, and then and then the uh, the so second rebounds, too. Yeah, the yeah. rebounds shot from the point and everything. You know what I mean? mm-hmm. um, the, well, the, the point fly- that I was. Uh, uh, let me just say this real quick. The point that I was trying to make is this, and 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 Lance Green said it, and and Amy said it too. You know, when when you are not taking care of business, yes. then these are these are the kinds of things that are going to happen. If you don't play the game that you should be playing, like we should be, like we know we can be playing, mm-hmm. this is what's going to happen every single time. Yeah. Yeah. You know. We're, we're being outcoached. And I think that's, we're being yeah. outplayed. And 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 the point that they made was this: the Islanders are where the Flyers need to be a year from now. Okay, so like the Islanders are where the Flyers are. The the Islanders are one year ahead of us. Okay, because their young guys are now coming to fruition. Their young guys are now putting points on the board, and we have to be paying attention to these guys like we do with Ovechkin and, and Crosby and that kind of stuff. And they also not. made the playoffs last year. So exactly. Yeah. What? So they have experience. Now these young guys, this is the second year under trots, and everybody has bought in. Okay? Not everybody has bought in under AV with the Flyers. Not yeah. everybody has. And, 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 and I think I think one thing that a lot of fans like – I guess misinterpreted was this team wasn't going to go 16 and 0 and this team wasn't destined to win a Stanley Cup this year regardless if they lose this playoff series this this season is a huge success regardless agreed so again I didn't expect them to you know a Cinderella story 16 and 0 this whole playoff run cuz it's not going to happen and at some point you have to play out of your I guess your comfort zone at times too so and that's I think that's kind of what they did versus Montreal, and I think what they expected was, 
against New York to go back to their regular style, and it's not there. You got to play the exact same way you did versus the Canadians, but it's going to hurt you even more because they got more skill. I mean, I mean, yeah. you look at guys like Lee Nelson, Barzell, right? It's just teams know how to play in the playoffs, and once you get in the playoffs, it's just a different mentality. And I think it just hit them hard. And one thing is, I will say though about Aline Vigneault is that I, I think it was. I don't know if it was. I know we did it with the Rangers when they came back versus yep. Pittsburgh three to one and ended up going to the, the yeah. Cup final. Mm-hmm. I I'm, yep. I'm not 100 percent sure if he did it with Vancouver. He might have, but I don't remember. No, no, no okay. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't remember if it was. Okay. Uh, he did it with the Rangers. Yeah, I knew it was the yeah. Rangers. I didn't know if he did it with Vancouver yeah, yeah, yeah. or not. But um, I think they were playing against Vancouver. Mm. Oh, that would have had to be in the cup. Cause yeah, that would have been no the question. No, okay, all right. And the Rangers didn't. But he win did coach the Vancouver, though, right? Yeah. He, yeah. Vino coach, yeah. coach Van- Okay, okay, okay. My yeah. confusion, my mess. But okay. I was going to say with the Flyers, they got to stop playing so fancy. Like yeah, you, that's another... you, you hit that. Yeah, you hit that right on the head by saying comparing it to the Capitals. We're trying to yeah. play like the Capitals. Yeah, exactly. Because they, they want the perfect right play all the time, especially yeah. guys like Hayes and Konechny. Like it's just like, dude, just shoot the damn thing. Yeah, like, I mean, you stop have watching the play. The team, exactly. I mean, Hayes, like, you saw it. I mean, we all saw with Hayes. He gets the wide open shot and he snipes it. Yeah, but with this, with the Islanders, what the Capitals didn't understand, and the one thing I agreed with the guys on the telecast was. Get in front of the net. Like, the, like they even said the Capitals never understood that the entire series, and that's why they lost. They yeah. kept trying to finesse everything, and it didn't work. I said Where, the same thing against Montreal. Yeah. Price can't stop everything if he doesn't see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get in front of it. <laughs> like, it's, it's not that hard. Vorlobov is one of the worst. Like, he's a good goalie, but he's one of the worst in the league. If you watch highlights of him, at seeing around a screen. Yeah, if you get a couple guys in front, he's not like Price and he's not like Quick was in his he's prime, where like, like, yeah, where yeah, he can he's go around looking, yeah, 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 yeah. He's not comfortable doing that, where he usually gets scored on in those instances. Same with Grice. The reason they played so well this year is the Islanders never let you get in front of the net, so you have to out physical them and piss them off. So they let you get in front of the net. It's funny. I had an argument with somebody saying, "Oh, well, Shea Weber's in front of the net." What does that have to do with anything? Battle with him. <laughs> Just like, skate around that. Like, like Shea Weber is not like this, like, you know, seven foot, big foot guy where he's, you know, it's like battle. If anything, get them so, so angry that they take a battle. <laughs> Five years ago, Shea Weber in front of the net. That was a different story. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. But not it, now. Yeah. Right. Especially in a team that, you know, struggled the whole season in Montreal. Like. The fact that we didn't beat Montreal told me a lot about what's going on with this team. Yeah. Because we got lucky. We got outplayed. We got outplayed. We got out hustled. We got outscored. They, they outshot us. They, they, they did everything that we wanted to do to them. They did to us. So we luckily got through that. Yeah, it depends yeah. how you define luck, because uh, yeah, well, because Carter Hart kind of carried. All right, then we got hard by that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and so. it wasn't in like, and to me, it wasn't in like this big thing where every single game they were outplayed. It to me, it was like at times when they were just awful. It was like really bad for them, and and, and it just it struggled. But the thing was is. For some, like they were able to capitalize on their opportunities against the Canadians, and that's why they won, because they yeah. were able to, you know, they were able to tone it down in, in the periods, and and especially in the third, and and they would win the game. To me, it doesn't matter so much in the first round how you play, unless it, it, because you win the game. Like like I, I'm I'm a, I'm 100 okay with them winning, you know, games one nothing, two nothing, especially yeah. in the first round. But in the second, third round, like I'm not really so comfortable with it because. You know, it's it's getting, you know, closer and closer to the cup final, and you don't want it to be this lingering problem that you can't score goals and that you have to constantly win games one nothing, two to one, three two, things like that. Yeah. So to me, yeah. I think it was just a, a mix of problems that they had. And I think a lot of this of what they did in the round robin carried over from last season and they they were just starting to lose it at, at some point. And honestly, I wouldn't have been surprised if if this were a if this had never happened and we went into the playoffs normally like that, I wouldn't have been surprised if they were to lose in the second or third round. Cause I think that could have happened as well, where they just fell off 
so bad like that. And it's just like, what are you just doing because of the way that they were playing and things like that? So you mean if we would have continued on, yeah. like if we didn't have if we didn't have the break or whatever, right? Yeah. So you're saying if we continued on and didn't have the break and we and we actually earned the number one seed and went into the playoffs as a number one seed, yeah, is that what I you're saying? Yeah, I'd be surprised if they maybe flew through the first and second round and then got absolutely smoked in the conference finals just because of how good they were playing. Now, obviously, I've some people are probably thinking like, what are you talking about? But again, it's it, it's I don't know. 145 days is a long time in between playing hockey. Right. And when you spend that amount of time without even skating, which is the first time these guys went without skating since they were four or five years of age, most of them. Yeah. I mean, normally when you have an off season, you might spend a total of a month or two not skating, right? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Otherwise, you're on the ice and you're skating, or you're working out, or you're doing something yeah. that involves right. you skating, or something. Yeah. And some guys got like you know private rinks and things like that to skate on and things like that. Right. So, I think the 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 break. By the has... way, um, Oscar, according to AV, isn't playing. Yeah. Yeah, he's in line. He's in a uh, lineup again or warm warm ups. Yeah. Warm up, but uh, Sam typed an article in the first sentence says. Uh, left winger Oscar Lindblom won't be ready to play in game five Tuesday night against the New York Islanders, according to head coach Elaine Vigneault. Okay. So he's not playing. Apparently, Raffle could be. Uh, okay. He says, but Michael Raffle is a possibility. And then Elaine Vigneault wants players to put on the big boy pants, which he probably should have told them about three days ago. But uh, better late than never. <laughs> uh, you mean three games ago? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. It, Three it, days ago like, wouldn't have meant nothing. <laughs> you know, honestly, like, I think well, a lot could've, of this. Well, could have won last game. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Sunday. yeah, that's the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. And and honestly, I've, they probably could have won game three as well. And honestly, I don't even think they played well enough to even win game two. So, like. No, they just won. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they yeah, were, yeah. They struggled. And then, really, they owned the whole overtime, the whole two, two three minutes it was. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. to me, it's like. This series could have went either way because as much as we want to harp on the Flyers, the Islanders haven't played their best either. Like, the Islanders haven't given a full 60-minute effort at times. Like, the Flyers have dominated them in squirts. The yeah. Islanders have dominated yeah. us in yeah. squirts. So we got, it, it but you got to give it to the Islanders, though. You do. you, right. you got to give it to you the Islanders. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because they have really played us to the T. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Trotz has really played us very, very well, too. You know what I mean? And he's he's very well he's coached against us very well. He was able to look at what Montreal did and then he took at what Montreal did and then was able to incorporate that into his game plan. The only difference is is that he has better players doing it than Montreal does. Right. And and that's why we've looked like we've been skating through concrete sometimes because it's not just the fact that we're playing bad. You gotta give credit to the Islanders because come on. Yeah. Here they are in the second round as well. They're no slouch. They made it to the playoffs last year. We didn't. Yeah. Oh yeah, the but the problem I, didn't, is, yeah, I agree with Chris. The Islanders haven't played their best game. We just agreed. Played their best game. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the thing. It, like it's times where I think like if the Flyers were on their A game, this game could have this series could be tied right now. Seriously. Yeah. Or or they yeah. could be leading the series. You know, so, I agree. Yeah, I mean and, and uh, it's just it's them not performing, it's them not playing the way that, that they should we play. Played, if we played like we did in our nine game stretch at the end of the season. If we played like that, and we saw flashes of that in the Montreal series, and we also seen it in the Islanders series too. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's got to be a consistent effort. Exactly. We need it all 60 minutes. And I have not seen a 60 minute game from us yet. Right. And, and, and that's the thing. It's like, it's what, like, honestly, what team honestly wins a game dominating all 60 minutes? It never happens. It's hockey, right? But yeah. if you could give me like 45 minutes, which is I think that's what they, they did last game. They gave us like 45 minutes yeah. of that. Do it again, please, and score when you have the when you have the chance. Cause you know Yeah, we really need the score. Yeah. I mean yeah, need, yeah. for some reason I mean, I don't know what it is, but you can't, you know, for some reason they don't know that you can't really win games when you only score one goal. So again, it's just, you know, well, let me put it to you like this. If you're if you're going to hope and hang your hat on one goal games, then you better have shut down goalie back air. OK, exactly. and, and you better not be hanging them out to dry neither. Uh, and you know what aggravates me so much, too, is like they get the lead and then they just stop. 
Like, it's just like, okay, we got the lead. Let's just get we the red line back. dumping for 20 minutes. Like, yeah, because yeah, that's going to do you great. Yeah. It's just yeah. Unless if you're in the final ten minutes of the game, like the Islanders do that, if they're up three nothing and it's the final ten minutes, they start playing pretty. Let's just get this to the side. Let's just, but that's in the final ten minutes, right? Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what. So speaking of final ten minutes, let's get your final thoughts on this one, Chris. What do what do you think? Do you do you think the Flyers can pull this out? Look, we've been ragging on them for the last half an hour. Um, we we already we all know what's bad. You know what I mean? But look. We, we got to be impressed by the fact that they're even at this point. Right. We have to be impressed by the fact that they got the number one seed by beating the teams that they did beat to get to this point. Okay. What do you think? Give me your final thoughts, Chris. I think they win the night. I don't, I don't have a score or anything, but I think they win the night. Knowing them, they'll win the night. Like, okay. like for me, watching this team for years, for being so bad as they were, it's just like this is a typical – game that literally spells out the six letters flyers and they win and it's just like you know with with the way that they what they like the way that they've played the luck that they honestly haven't had because i don't think they had really much puck luck at all either (laughs) no um i think once they actually score and you know their guys like drew and connect ended up scoring it's just going to open the floodgates and hopefully they do it at the right time because they need it right now but i think they'll win the night Okay. Okay. Professor Joe, lay some wisdom on me, buddy. If what do you think? If we make adjustments that I think we'll make, I think we'll win tonight. Well, first of all, if Raffles back in, that's a huge bolt. Boost. Yep. I mean, a bolt yeah. to your lineup because he's been great defensively and he's been producing offensively. Yeah. Uh, and like and we know the Carter the Hart's going to be starting too, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Hart's going to be. Yeah. Well, yeah. If Hart's not in, then I'll, I don't know what's and, going on there. And Hart, <laughs> in, and Hart in games coming off of uh, not playing, he's got a pretty good record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's another thing to keep in mind as well. So, so Joe, do you th- what do you think, Joe? I think we win if we make the adjustments, which I think we're going to have to make by default. Because I think if Raffle's going to be back in, it's going to be a different lineup. In general. Right. And hopefully uh, they switch something up with putting yeah. Raffle into it. I also think – I don't. I understand what A.V. say. Maybe Nate Thompson's a veteran in the locker room. He wears the big boy pants in the locker room. That's all fine and dandy. I don't care what he does in the locker room. If Amen. he's not doing good on the ice – can we please? He can wear the big boy pants as much as he wants in the locker room. Keep him in the- <laughs> like, I don't need Yeah, really? But can the- you put some big boy it's skates on when you're out there on the to, ice? It's better to be a leader of the locker room. That's where you can keep yeah. him and fuck him in the locker room. Yeah, because it, it seems like he wears the big boy pants in the locker room, and then he wears like a little you know, child's diaper on the ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. It, just, you know, it's like, come on. Keep, keep that. If you're not going to move JVR up, keep the Lawton and Pitlick in line, and then put Bunham yeah. in, in for – Thompson, who warmed up last game, and I was pissed he didn't get put in. Uh, so do that this game, please. And then yeah, Ralph really. will probably be in. And okay. then I personally believe, I don't think this will happen, but I believe because of how abysmal our power play been, and like you said, that's something that could just get you kicking if you start doing decent there. Yeah, Having Ghost in is, gives you a far superior chance to get your power play going mm-hmm. than having any of these other defensemen, including yeah. how Kobe's playing and, right now. Right, on your power- to me... They have nothing to lose in this game either. Yeah. Like it's it's like you know if your season's over, it's you know like if anything, just throw everything at them. Put all like put this in like it was. I don't remember what game it was. I think it was game two when they put when they had put Gossis Bear in yeah. and things like that. that like JVR was in. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put all your offensive players and take yeah. Hag out. You know, and put Ghost in. All right. All right. I'm gonna tell you this. I think if we make the adjustments, look, we have the players on this roster we do but we're not using them correctly in my opinion Mm -hmm. okay and and until we start using them correctly what this is what we're dealing with all right so i agree with everything you guys said if we don't make the adjustments that we need to make then we're definitely going to be losing um i don't have a prediction on this game because i don't have a feel for it i don't know i i just don't know I, I really hope and pray that we win, but I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. I'm just not feeling it. I really want us to win. Look, I, I, I've heard other people, some great hockey fans, great Philadelphia Flyers fans, when, when this whole series started and said that they were picking the Islanders. I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. But then, now that you see, okay, now I can understand why they picked the Islanders. You know what I mean? So, 
I don't. I really hope we win tonight, man. I really do. I I hope it goes well. I would like to see the Flyers continue on and keep playing. But well, I, I another thing I would. Like what have you say, done for me lately? Another thing I would like to say is games have been getting more physical. Flyers games have not as much. Like I've been watching other games around the league, and after every game play in front of the net. If the team hasn't been successful in the past few games, they're trying to piss off the other team. Yeah. Oh, only there's only about two or three guys total on our team that have been trying to do that this postseason. Yeah. The yeah. Flyers as a whole need to get in the head of the other team more and battle them in front of the net. Don't take stupid penalties. Don't pull a Nazim Kadri or a um, whoever that was, Nick Ritchie on the Bruins. But just do what you got to do in front of the net and battle them and piss them off. They're not doing that. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think we we saw that a lot last night in the Dallas and Colorado exactly. game. But that That's that was already you know five one five nothing at a time. And all if you're Dallas, you're trying to stir something up. Yeah, exactly. So I think I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to come out and be be aggressive and and take the game to the the Islanders like we've been harking the the last however many days, weeks, months, like, whatever. Somebody challenge yeah. Barzal. That'll send a message. Exactly. Just exactly. Yeah, like, hey, Matt. Mean- Want to go? Exactly. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. just, just, just yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you want to do something? You, hey, Thompson, you want to do something to impress me? You walk against Barzal and drop the gloves, buddy. You show uh, me what yeah. you got. And that's one thing. I don't understand why that line. That would be a that spark. Line. That would be a that's, spark. That's that's the thing that gets me, you know, like annoyed. That line going yeah. up. Yeah, yes. that, that's part of the reason why I sit so close to the TV. Exactly, <laughs> Chris, buddy. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here, man. The phenom. Tell us how we can get a hold of you and how we can follow you and get all your great stuff, man. Yeah, so uh, I'm on YouTube. Uh, it's Flyer Sim 93. You can check that out there. Um, also have the podcast called Flyer Up Podcast. Uh, and then I'm also on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, it's Flyer Sim 93. Uh, you can check me out on there as well. And uh, still, I appreciate you having me on. It was a, it's been, it's, it's really, it's really been a long time coming. I've been wanting to come on here, and I appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, Joe, you too. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. Yeah, man, for sure. Joe, Professor Joe, how can we get a hold of you, man, and how can we follow you? The dog's been barking the whole time. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, me, but mine's too. Mine too. <laughs> uh, well, on steelflyers.com, we have all our stuff. Flyers, Nitty Gritty, Pub Sports, and then OT Heroics are the, the main ones. And then Sports Fanatic News is the YouTube. That's where you can find me at. Let's go, Flyers. Let's win this game tonight. Yeah, man. Um, I want to thank you guys both for being here. We have a special announcement. Uh, we're going to be adding Chris. Uh, is going to be coming on board to part of the uh, Steel Flyers uh, website here. So be looking forward to his stuff coming out, uh, being able to go to the one-stop shop, steelflyers.com. You can follow me uh, on Twitter at steelflyers52. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough. <laughs>